Hi, I'm Grace. This is the Teach Film Channel. I'm here with Art and John from mm -hmm. Celebrating Act Two, talking about Dr. Hudson's Secret Journal, which is the program for today. Following this introduction, check the countdown if you want to skip ahead. Art, you have some interesting uh, information. Yeah, well, quite frankly, I remember having seen this as a kid. Wow. Uh, I know it was only on for a couple of seasons, but uh, one of the most interesting things of all is that uh, as as many of these early shows had, they had people who went on to do other things. And one of them was a very, very young Jerry Mathers. But I don't want to go back. I like it here. Of Leave it to Beaver fame. And he actually started Leave it to Beaver right after this series ended. Now, he, I, I think he was only in this one show. And, and there was another interesting uh, person, Jack Kelly, who went on right after the series ended to the, the uh, Brett and Bart Maverick. He was one of the Maverick brothers. So uh, it was interesting from that same point. So we're not sure he was in this episode, but uh, he was. Yeah. But he was definitely a Dr. Burnett in several episodes. And uh, it was just interesting, the guest stars that they had who went on to become major players in other series right after this one ended. I mean, these are career actors, so they sure. move mm -hmm. from one program to another. So, yeah, I understand. Uh, it was really fascinating to see the uh, the pre-Beaver Jerry Mathers. I'm not sure how old he must have been. I, I'm guessing six years old in this. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. So I hope, I hope you enjoy that part of the program. You'll hear him uh, deliver some very nice lines. Yeah. And, and John, John, so you had some history about uh, Hollywood pertaining to this program. As you know, I love the, the history of television and film. One of the reasons that, uh, let's say, they went on to Maverick and the Beaver is because this was distributed by MCA. Mm. Okay, yeah. MCA stands for Music Corporation of America. You have to go to the credits and you'll see the logo, MCA TV. But MCA started in the 20s by a guy named Jules Stein, famous character in Chicago, of all places. Okay. And it started as a talent representative. In other words, they would book music, they would represent musicians and book them into clubs, things like that. Okay. Expanded into, they were very ambitious, expanded into all kinds of stuff. In 1936, a young man named Lou Wasserman, at 23 years old, became the wonder kind of MCA. And he and Jules Stein basically moved it to Hollywood in the late 30s, early 40s. Beverly Hills, more accurately. They mm -hmm. started as a talent representative and quickly went into, of course, they were into recording music. Of course. And quickly went into television when the opportunity came. And MCA TV, in this case, I think you had pointed out to me, Grace, was a distributor. Uh -huh. But as a Hollywood entity... It became. It just keep growing and growing and growing. They bought everything they could find in sight. They bought the back lot from Universal Studios, and then they eventually opened up the first studio tour. But they bought publishers and they bought record companies and they bought all kinds of stuff. And Lou Wasserman kept finding talented young people, not unlike the Beave and uh, Maverick one of whom was Steven Spielberg. So that's a little little bit of history. It's Let me put it this way. It's worth looking up MCA uh, and MCA TV because it's a fascinating story of history, uh, uh, history of Hollywood, and continues today. There's still a major force, universal. Yeah. Well, one other thing I noticed in the credits, I'll just mention this quickly, but uh, the casting director was uh, a woman named Lynn, Lynn Stallmeyer. <laughs> I've seen her name on hundreds or thousands of TV shows uh, as casting director. So I'd love to look into her one day soon. Sure. Uh, in her career. So anyway, so this show, Dr. Hudson's Secret Journal, is a medical or a family drama. You're going to like it. It's a very nice look into 1956 television. And I guess I would say family values yeah. of the era yeah. and, and uh, a touching story of adoption. Here it is. Dr. Hudson's Secret Journal coming up in three, two, one. To the millions of people who have been entertained and inspired 
by magnificent obsession, white banners, disputed passage, the robe, and other famous books by Lloyd C. Douglas, we respectfully submit this series. It's a wonderful thing to be so steadily remembered by former patients and friends. Almost every mail this time of year brings me invitations to college commencements. One came today which I must attend. I'm not the least surprised that Ronnie Murray is graduating at the head of his class. At the age of 10 years, he had already been marked as a lad who was on his way. Hiya, Dr. Hudson. Want your paper now, or should I leave it in your office? I'll take it now. Look at what my dad gave me. Seven jewels, shot-proof and waterproof. Well. Dad gave it to me last night, because now I'm permanent with it. Has it been a whole year? Doesn't seem possible. Yep. Yesterday we got our legal papers. That means the orphanage can't take me back now. Well, that's wonderful, Ronnie. Yeah. I'm sure lucky to have found such a good home. I was thinking yesterday, wishing some of the other kids could be as lucky. Like, there's Jamie, for instance. Jamie? Yep. He's almost seven. And the brightest, smartest kid you ever saw. I'm kind of disappointed in that orphanage. They ought to found a place for a swell kid like Jamie long before this. I sure wish you could see him. Well, perhaps I can someday. I'm hoping the orphanage will let me take Jamie over to the hospital. I've got some real live prospects over there that might adopt him. Well, I'm sure the orphanage is trying to place him. They're not trying hard enough. You gotta work on these things. First, I was hoping I could work him in at the Murray's. Dad said he didn't make enough for a great big family. Well, I'll look around. Maybe I can find a home for Jamie. I knew you'd help, Dr. Hudson. You gotta push this thing. You know, Jamie isn't getting any younger. I'd say at six, he was in the prime of life. For orphans, it's different. If you're not chosen by the time you're seven, it was just pure green luck I got picked last year. Well, we'll talk about it tomorrow, Ronnie. I'm a little late this morning. See this article about the little boy who saved his whole family from a fire? It broke out in the middle of the night and he woke them all up. I bet you'd feel safer if you had somebody like that around your house. Well, I wasn't exactly counting on any fire. Just think, Miss Tacky. If you adopted the swell little boy I know, you'd never have to worry about sleeping through a fire. No, but I'd have to worry about him, though, wouldn't I? I think I'd rather take my chances with the fire. Gee, Miss Tacky, he needs a home so bad. And you're one of my best prospects. You're young and healthy. Thank you, Ronnie. I'm healthy enough, all right, but I'm not even married. Sutter Hospital, fourth floor. You win some, you lose some. Dr. Buell. Morning, Ronnie. You always in a hurry, Doctor? Story of my life, ever since grammar school. You want to slow up a little. All that hurry isn't good for you. I'll try, Doctor. Any other prescription? Sure. You ought to read more. For instance, right there, there's a story about a big new doctor's building going up over on Green Street. Suppose you'll be taking one of those offices soon. Yep, been about 80 years. You're married, aren't you? You said it. You don't have any children, do you? Just got married last week. You know, little babies cost an awful lot. You said it. But now you take a boy of six. He's pretty well paid for. He's already had the measles. 
and most of his shots, and he's had his tonsils out. What boy is six? A little kid I'm trying to find a home for. I've already got Dr. Hudson interested. He's practically begging to adopt Jamie. Then why are you pitching at me? In case something goes wrong, I'd like to have a spare. See? Here's my list. Well, I see Dr. Hudson is target number one. Yep, he's my hottest prospect. Have you told him yet? Nope. I'm working up to it, though. I'm using psychology. First, I snag his interest. Then I show him the merchandise. Then, wham, close the deal. He'll positively flip when he sees my little brother. <coughs> brother? You mean he's your brother? Guess there's no harm in telling you. But I don't want Dr. Hudson to know until he's seen Jamie. But why keep it a secret, Ronnie? He might think I'm prejudiced, and I'm not. It just so happens that Jamie is the brightest, handsomest, neatest kid in this whole town. Why should anyone think you were prejudiced? Hello, Ronnie. Uh, I wanted to tell you your magazine is going to be late this month. Oh, that's all right. I haven't had time to read it anyhow. Dr. Hudson, you work too hard. You ought to relax more. Should I? You sure ought. Fact is, I've been kind of worried about you lately. Me? Bet you get pretty lonely with only one child. And her a girl. Girls are all right, but a man needs a boy. To take fishing and play baseball with. Now, Kathy plays a pretty fair game of baseball. Maybe for a girl. But this little boy I was telling you about yesterday, he's going to be another Babe Ruth. And Bright, do you know what Jamie's IQ is? No, what? I don't exactly have the figures with me, but I know it's out of this world. And he's not one of those kids who's in your hair all the time. Tell him to do something, he does it. Well, I'm sure he's a very nice boy, Ronnie, but... Dr. Hudson, yeah. you need Jamie, and he needs you. Can't I just bring him around so you can see him? I'll see here, Ronnie. It's quite impossible for me to adopt Jamie. For one thing, I haven't got a wife. My gosh. That's easy enough to fix. I know a lady right next door to us. She's looking for a husband and she's crazy about doctors. I could go right out and call her on the phone. No, no, hold it a minute. It's not that simple. Now, I want to see Jamie in a good home as much as you do. And I'll help you all I can. But you've got to rule me out. Morning, Ray. Good morning, Dr. Hudson. You have those tests I ran off last night? Oh, yes. I saw you working all hours. Don't you ever go home? <laughs> That's what my wife keeps asking me. <laughs> But with Miller out with the flu, work does pile up at the lab. Dr. Hudson speaking. Yes? Tell me all about that guy. Who? Ray? What do you want to know? Important thing. Is he a nice guy? Is he reliable? How much does he make? Hey, slow up. He's a good Joe. He's absolutely reliable, and uh, I don't know exactly how much he makes. Give me a little hint. What kind of credit ratings he got? Well, I think Ray owns his own house. I have an idea. He's just the guy I want to see. What'd you say his name was? Gresham. Ray Gresham. Hey, but wait a minute. Gresham. Jamie Gresham. Gresham, I'm Ronnie Murray. Well, hello, Ronnie. I've seen you around. Got a free paper here for you. Well, thanks, but... Uh... I could deliver a paper to your house every day if you were on my route. Where do you live? Maple Drive. Gee, that's not in my territory. But it's an awfully nice neighborhood. What number did you say? I didn't say, but it's 140. Be seeing you. Are you Mrs. Gresham? Yes. Mrs. Ray Gresham? Yes, what is it? I'd like to ask you a few questions, Mrs. Gresham. I'm taking kind of a census. Oh. Well, you'd better come inside. Aren't you a little young to be a census taker? Well, I'm older than I look. 
I've had experience with lots of other jobs. Now, the first question I'd like to ask is how many are there in the family? Just my husband and myself. That's nice. Sometimes in-laws make trouble. Nice big house here. How many rooms? Six. Just what kind of a census are you taking? Just statistics. Nice and clean here. You're a good housekeeper. Well, thank you. I don't have too much else to do. Six rooms, huh? Must have a spare bedroom. Well, yes, I... I do. Uh... Nice room? Well, I think so. My, census taking certainly is more thorough than it used to be. What's your name? Ronnie. Ronnie Murray. How many closets? Census taking certainly has changed. As a matter of fact, there are two rather large closets. Kitchen through there? Mm-hmm. Better have a look. Something smells wonderful. I just made an apple pie. And there's a ham baking in the oven with sweet potatoes. It's my husband's favorite dinner. Hope he remembers to come home. Apple pie, huh? Doesn't he usually get home on time? Not lately. Swell big yard. Lots of room for softball and all fenced in, too. That's because of our dog, Ronnie. My God, a dog, too? Some dogs don't like children, but I'll bet yours does, doesn't he? He certainly does. Is he part of the census? Here, Taffy. <laughs> He's a swell dog. Do you like children? I most certainly do. And how do you like apple pie? I'm crazy about it. How about your husband? Oh, he's crazy about kids and apple pie. It's too bad you don't have any kids, I mean. Mm, most certainly is. Must get kind of lonely for you, home alone all day. Well, I've been thinking about taking a job, but my husband doesn't want me to work. Did you know I was adopted? My mom said she used to be awfully lonely before she got me. You ever think of adopting? Oh, there are long waiting lists in every agency in town. Hundreds of people want babies. That's just for infants. I can get you a cute little boy just like that. <laughs> what kind of a census taker are you? Well, I like to help people out. When I see a lonely couple, I try to do something about it. Now, I got this well little six-year-old I want you to take a look at. You gonna be home tomorrow? Well, yes, but it's visiting day, so as I can bring him around then. And you can see for yourself. Well, I know, but... Now, there's no obligation. You don't have to decide a thing. Just take a look, that's all. Boy, that pile is great. Gotta run now. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. I have to tell you, I think I found a deal. You don't have to worry about Jamie anymore. Jamie? What deal? I found the perfect place for Jamie. It's got everything. A yard, a big tree, plenty of room for a tree house, and they even got a dog, just the kind that Jamie likes. They got everything. Well, when did they see him? Oh, well, they haven't yet, but when they do, they'll be crazy about him. Now, I gotta go tell Jamie. Now, Ronnie, hold on a moment. You're way ahead of yourself. It'll be okay. I'll tell you all about it tomorrow. Now, Ronnie, wait. We had always looked upon Ronnie Murray as a kind of mascot at Center Hospital. The economic ups and downs of his newsstand his release from the orphanage for adoption, his progress in school were daily elements of hospital gossip. But even so, we had failed to realize the strong drive behind Ronnie's plan to find a mother and father for his younger brother. And this is Jamie. Jamie, say hello. Hello. Ronnie, you were so right. I could eat him up. She's only kidding, Jamie. Shake hands with the lady. See what you missed? You could have had him, but he's been snapped up by the Greshams. Ray Greshams? Here's the little boy I was telling you about, Dr. Buell. Cute kid. But he's taken now. You missed a good deal. 
Oh, better luck next time. Well, so this is Jamie. Ronnie's told me all about you. It's like I said, he's snapped up now. I'm going to take him down to see Mr. Gresham now. Ray hasn't come in yet. Gresham isn't in yet? Is he sick? I don't know. He hasn't phoned. Well, it's not like him. Mrs. Gresham probably made him stay home. Just special, so he could meet Jamie. You better get down there right away, Jamie. Where are they going? Tacky, what is all this? Haven't you heard? The Greshams are taking Jamie. The Greshams? Well, I saw Ray last night. He didn't mention it. He didn't come in this morning. Sure isn't like him. He's such an eager beaver for work. Mm. You get Ray on the phone for me. He wasn't coming in today or ever. He didn't want to talk about it. What are you doing here? We came. That is to see Mrs. Gresham. Is she here? She's here all right, but she's no mood to take out a subscription for Home and Fireside, so you boys better run along. Well, we're not here to sell papers. The coffee's boiling over. Your wife, I'd bring him over today. What is it, Dom? You can see him in a minute. This isn't a very good day for a visit. But we've got to see Mrs. Gresham. We've got business with her. Oh, Mrs. Gresham. Is that the lady? Oh, Ronnie, what in the world? You remember I promised to bring Jamie to see you today? This is Jamie. Oh, I'm sorry, Ronnie, but... I'm afraid this isn't a very good day. You going away somewhere? Yes, I, I am. I'm leaving. When will you be back? I don't know, Ronnie. I, I'm not coming back. Ronnie, you might ask the lady where she's going. Where are you going? To a hotel. Aren't you going with her? No. No, he most certainly is not. They like me. Sure, sure they do. They haven't even seen you yet. Will you send a cab, please, to 140 Maple Drive? Yes, just as soon as possible. Where's your dog? Out back. Ronnie, tell Mrs. Gresham I'll be glad to carry her suitcases out to the taxi for her. Gee, she's right here. Can't you tell her? Does your dog bite people? Taffy? He'd barely bite hamburger. Would you please tell Mr. Gresham that I'd rather have the taxi driver do it? Don't you like each other anymore? You liked him yesterday. You were making all his favorite stuff for dinner. Which he couldn't even bother to come home to. Some women just can't understand that emergencies come up at a hospital. Some men could at least call home. Emergencies, night after night. What kind of a married life is that? A man works hard to make a good home for his wife. And what thanks does he get? I'll get it. Hello. Oh, hello, Mr. Fredericks. You got my message? Well, I'm giving you an exclusive on the house, and I want some action right away. I know it's sudden, but I've made up my mind to sell the place. That's right. Goodbye. Sell it. You're going to sell this pretty house? What else is there to do with it? I better go get Jamie. He likes me. Come on, Jamie.
Tell Mrs. Gresham I'm taking these few books. She can have everything else. Your dog likes me. He licked my hand. Morning, Jamie. Have to take you back now. But I don't want to go back. I like it here. Don't you want me? Oh, Jamie. Anyone would want a nice little boy like you. But don't you understand my life is going to be changed from now on? I, I have to get a job and a hotel room is no place to bring up a little boy like you. I don't see why you want to go away from here. I like it here. Don't worry, Jamie. I'll find you a place, a better place, where people aren't mad at each other. It's nice here. Well, I want you in a place where things are more settled. My gosh, if you came home a little late from school someday, then wham, everybody would be packing and nobody would be talking to anybody. That's my taxi. Morning, Sue. Well, Dr. Hudson, won't you come in, please? Thank you. Morning, Ray. I'm sorry, Dr. Hudson. I know I should have called in this morning, but uh, everything's been so mixed up around here. Uh, sit down, Doctor. Well, naturally, I was a little mystified when you said you were quitting your job. Quitting? I'd always thought that you were satisfied, Ray. Well, Ray, you know you loved your work. I... I always felt you loved your work more than you did me. I've been getting in a rut there. I'm thinking of going to New York. He wants to go to New York. She wants to live in a hotel, and all the time they've got this nice house. What you gonna do with the dog? We uh, hadn't thought about that. Perhaps there are a lot of things you haven't thought about. Maybe if you just sit down and talk things over. They won't even speak to each other. Even when I'm real bad, Ronnie speaks to me. Ray, I was thinking on the way over here that perhaps it was my fault you decided to leave. Maybe I've been expecting too much of you. It's not your fault, Doctor. The work piles up in the lab. Somebody's got to do it. I see you working every night at the hospital, too. Yes, but I haven't the same family responsibilities you have. I don't have a wife to come home to. If I were as lucky as you. Ray, if you'd consider coming back, maybe I could make arrangements so this wouldn't happen again. I could get you an assistant in the lab, so at least you'd have a few evenings at home. Well, uh... That must be my taxi. Would you tell it to go away, please? Now you're talking. And once they'd started talking, things were soon settled. Ray finally understood that, though his motives had been good in working so hard to make a home for Sue, it wasn't a real home to her unless he was in it. Then the following month, their home became even more complete. For he's, he's a jolly good fellow. Which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny, which nobody can deny. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow. And so say you and I. Happy birthday, Jamie. Now make a wish and then blow out all the candles.
And thus was Jamie's seventh birthday, that dangerous birthday for orphans, celebrated with his new parents, Sue and Ray Gresham. Small wonder that we have all expected great things of Ronnie Murray. And from what I hear, young Jamie is traveling rapidly on his big brother's heels.